In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create stunning captions on your videos inside of Adobe Premiere Pro 2024. This video is sponsored by Motion Elements. More about them later on. So the first thing that I'm going to do in order to create the captions is to auto transcribe this sequence. So in order to do that, we are just going to make sure the title window is enabled. So you go to window and make sure you can see text. And that should pop up with the text window, which is here. Now we're going to scroll across to transcript and we can press transcribe. So this will take a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes to transcribe your sequence for you. And there you go. So we're just going to scroll to the very beginning and we're just going to play this back and make sure this is accurate. So, you can take a crop image and make it much wider so it got absolutely every single word correct. However, in your example, if it goes wrong, in order to change it, you just double click where it's gone wrong. And let's say it misspelled support. You would then just delete that and then just type that out. And once you're happy with the look of that, you can select these three dots here, create captions. And this should load this window. So we're going to open up captioning preferences. And this is the first way that we can control the look of the captions. So maximum length in characters. So this means if we have this really far to the right, it means we can have 72 characters, which means it will try and fit basically an entire sentence or as much as it can into your one caption. So there'll be longer captions, but there'll be more info. So if we pull this down to around 30, it's going to be much shorter but I'm going to keep it somewhere in the middle. Minimum durations in seconds is exactly what it sounds like. So it's just the length of the captions. So if I have this all the way down at 1.2, this means a caption should be no shorter than 1.2 seconds. But if you've got loads of information, then it might be difficult to read that in that short amount of time. So I generally like to keep this at around the three second mark. Gap between captions is your frames. So rather than them flowing into each other, you can have them turn on and turn off again. And you can set this. So if you pull this all the way to the right, you can have a 10 frame gap between the frames. Or if you keep this at zero, which I like, it's just going to go from one caption to another without a break. And you can pick single or double lines. So it's just going to split the captions onto one or two lines. I'm going to go for single in this example and we'll press create captions. Now I'm happy with the results that this has spit out for me. However, if you're not happy with yours, you can just delete the captions, go back into the transcript, create the captions and just go through those settings again, making some adjustments. But for now, I'm happy with that. So I can control the look of these now. So I'm just going to select one of them and we'll go into window and we're going to make sure we find essential graphics. So essential graphics should be turned on. And when it does, you should see this window. Now you want to scroll across to edit. And this is where we're going to change the look of that caption. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to change the font. So all of my fonts I use are monster rat. Let's go for monster rat black. Or we'll go for something a bit thinner. Then you can increase, decrease the size of this, make this as big or small as you want this to be. You can change the zone so we can place this in the center. We can place this on the right left put this wherever you want i'm going to go for the center in this example could be quite fun and you can always offset this by just pulling on these sliders so if you want it in the center but just down a little bit you would select the center zone and then just pull this down a pinch like this then you can go through all of your other settings so i'm going to create a background here so i'm going to select background we're going to change the color of this to a nice orange to make it really pop then I'm just going to increase the opacity of the background. So zero, it disappears. 100, it's solid. I'll increase the size of it. And then I'm just going to round off the corners. Then I can remove or add some drop shadow. I'm going to keep it where it was though, because I think that's quite nice. And you can also add a stroke, but I'm happy with the look of that. So once you've gone through all of these settings and you're happy with the look, you just want to go into track style, create style, and we'll call this orange box or rename it something that you're going to recognize. Press OK and you can see it will convert all of those captions to the same look. So we now have a uniform look across our captions. Before we carry on with this video, let me please just take a second to talk about Motion Elements. Motion Elements is an online platform where you can download Premiere Pro and After Effects templates. You can download presets for Notion. You can download stock video. You can download stock images, music files. There's so much for you to access and so much for you to download. So it's a really powerful website and it's a great tool for us creatives to have. Now, Motion Elements have kindly sponsored this channel. So as a special thank you, they have given you a very kind discount on your first month when you are subscribed to their plan. And as always, you can find the link to this in the description below. Now, back to the video.
Now, in order to animate these on, we are going to have to take this caption and convert it into a graphic. So we're going to highlight all of those captions. We'll go to graphics and titles and select upgrade caption to graphic. And you can see that's gone from the caption or the subtitles track down onto our normal video track. So this means we can now go into effect controls and we can adjust the scale. We can adjust the position, rotation, and we can add all of this animation on. Now I'm going to keep things very simple with this. I'm just going to go for a basic scale down and blur effect. I think could look quite nice. So I'm going to go to the first graphic or the first caption. And I'm just going to increase the scale. So I'm going to go to motion scale, increase the scale to 150 or I'll keep it more subtle and go 120. Create a brand new keyframe on the scale and I'm going to move over five frames to the right and pull that down to 100 or just reset it. Then I'm just going to convert that last keyframe to an ease in. So right click and ease in. So when I play this back, you can see it's a slow scale down. So if I wanted to speed that up, then I could just decrease the gap between those keyframes. And that's now a little bit quicker. As well as doing that, I'm also going to add a Gaussian or a Gaussian blur effect. So I'm going to search for Gaussian blur, drop that onto that graphic. I'm going to go to the very beginning and increase the blurriness. Create a brand new keyframe on the blurriness and then two or three frames to the right. I'm going to pull that down to zero. So we start off bigger and blurry and then it's going to scale down and become clear. So when we play this back, you can see that looks pretty good. So once you're happy with the look of that first graphic, you can just copy the Gaussian blur, copy the motion. We're going to go command C on Mac or control C on Windows. That's just copy. Then we'll highlight all of the other captions or the other graphics and we'll go command or control V. Now, of course, if you're not happy with the positioning of any of this, then all you need to do is just go back into motion. We'll move the position down. So let's say we want it as a classic subtitle line near the bottom. Just highlight the motion and then just paste that onto everything again and they'll all just shift down. Of course, this scale down and blur is just one example. You could do a pulse in so the scale starts at zero and increases up and bounces back down again. You could do a rotation wiggle. You could do an animated box behind this. There are so many different variations of your captions and your subtitles. This is just one example of many. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Now, if you've made it to this point in the video, then I would like to think I have done something right. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please consider checking out one of the other videos just up here. You can click this card and that will take you to a playlist of other Premiere Pro text-based tutorials. So hopefully I'll see you on a future video. See you there.